This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now we learn more about the Gardner Angus Ranch with Dwayne Taves and Mark Gardner. Dwayne Thames joining you once again on Ag AM in Kansas and an opportunity to catch up with Mark Gardner, Gardner Angus Ranch. And Mark, we're talking about uh, surviving and thriving in the beef business. Uh, you recently talked to some producers about things that the Gardner Ranch has been involved in. Talk a little bit about uh, how that perception and, and forward-looking uh, opportunity came about that, uh, that you decided that we're going to start to take part of our own destiny. Well, I think when you look at all the opportunities that we have in agriculture, um, in the old days, they might have called it neighboring and they might call it networking today or they might just call it uh, a bull session. But I think when you invest in yourself and you invest in the opportunities that are available, and that means becoming educated about those. And so we talked a little bit about the startup company of U.S. Premium Beef that was started in 1997. And... Uh, that was an idea at the time that was a lot of people were against it and they said you could not do it but we felt there was a need uh, to make an investment and put skin in the game and uh, there were 450 some producers stockholders that ultimately invested uh, to having further processing and, and bought a part of national beef and uh, we were probably too young and dumb at that time to know we couldn't do that but because of good people, hard work, good information, uh, it's a company and a system that has added a lot of value to my family's business, to my customers' business, but quite frankly, you know, Dwayne, to the entire beef industry. And so when we can add value to the business of beef, that's good for everybody. You talk about having uh, the foresight to be involved in something like that. Understanding and having a knowledge of what your kettle were able to do and perform was pretty important to, to take that step, I assume. Absolutely. You know, if we can measure it, we can manage it. And I, you know, often it's simple and, and often said, but knowledge is power. And so when you know what these cattle can do, I actually think back to the beginning of U.S. Premium Beef. And as a kid and, and all through my life, we went in and got carcass data. And I remember a lot of the stockholders in, in those days just think that all cattle were thought of as the same and they're all great. They're, they're wonderful because they were born on my land. And, and I remember telling my friend and our CEO, Steve Hunt, I said, you know, if we're lucky, the U.S. premium beef cattle will be average at best because they haven't been selected uh, for the end product merit traits that, that we're going to pay our grid on. And he knew that and I knew that and a lot of the industry had to learn that. For my own family, when we had been getting carcass data since 1970, we knew there were differences. There were huge differences and we measured those differences. So when, when other customers and other stockholders and beef producers had that same opportunity to see those differences, Cattlemen are not stupid. And so when they saw those results, they made the changes both in manages, management and also in genetics uh, to become more profitable. So knowledge truly is power. And when they measured that, when they saw those differences, they made the changes they needed to make, Dwayne, to become more profitable. Your operation, obviously, you give a lot of credit to your father in making that decision a long time ago uh, to make that kind of genetic selection and advancement. You know, at, we're at Kansas State today, and Dad learned how to AI in the 1950s, and it became proficient enough. And it was a new technology in the 1950s there. It was kind of radical. Uh, but in 1964, he made the decision to, to be total AI without the use of any cleanup bulls. And we've maintained that to this date. But if we look at our information and we look at all the the what we had learned from 1964 to 1980 dad knew that he hadn't made any progress our calves had the same weaning weight then as they did in 1980 and but he was a beef advocate a beef enthusiast and he's like we ought to be able to make change in the beef business but dang it why haven't we been able to and we he'd look at the dairy industry and see the improvements they made well, when we look back to the fall of 1980, that was the very first sire summaries that were run for most breeds and certainly for American Angus Association. We got the same tools that the dairy industry had, and that was the best linear unbiased prediction, the BLUP procedure. I remember coming home for Thanksgiving in the fall of 1980, and Henry said, I finally know what we're going to do. I said, great. What are we going to do? We're only going to use high accuracy progeny proven bulls for the traits of merit. I said, well, how are you going to know what those are? Well, here they are. They're in the sire summary. This is what we're going to do. I said, well, how do you know that's right? 
He said, I took all the bulls I used from 1964 to 1980, and I averaged them up, and their EPDs told them if we use them in a total AI situation, we would make no change on anything. Birth weight, weaning weight, yearling weight, any weight. I mean, and we've made absolutely no change. This will work, he said. And I said, oh, great. And since that time, the reality of, of our family and many other families' ranches, because of database selection, uh, we were able to go from a break-even to a loss business to, to be able to grow our business, where today it supports my, my two brothers and, and uh, um, basically 10 different families. And so we grew the business, but it was as simple as we had measured it. We knew we needed to improve. We got the knowledge and the information to make those improvements. When we did that, we grew our business and helped other families do the same. Our thanks to Mark Gardner joining us on Ag AM in Kansas. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Come back after the break for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. <music> 